Baby Dude is back with another Baby Dude interview. Today I have East Los Angeles head coach, uh, dad of three, and he was featured on Netflix Last Chance You. Today I have Coach John Mosley. How are you doing today, John? Doing well. Hey, uh, excited to be on. Um, you know, uh, this is a great show, man. I, I uh, was surprised. You, we want to talk to the dads and what we do, you know. Hey, I can kind of stick my chest out there now a little bit. Got three babies at home, or not babies, but they're all teenagers now. But, uh, but no, I appreciate being on. Been, it's, it's been great, actually. It's plenty of time. The, the, the pandemic has actually been great. Uh, I'm, you know, the guys that I'm – my second home, which is my, my, uh, my team, I haven't been with them, so – they're suffering a little bit, but uh, my first home, man, it's, it's been phenomenal to be able to spend the time. So it's a great thing about the pandemic. The only thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I work from home. I teach um, at a high school here in LA. So I've been working from home ever since too. And I'm kind of on my lunch break right now doing this. So <laughs> this is how we're rolling it. So I appreciate you taking some time as well. Um, I guess first question for you is while this show is kind of blown up, which is awesome. Like I said, last chance you, Great show if you love basketball or just a good story. Um, I guess seeing it from behind, how is it like doing this while you're having kids? Like you're being dad. I know you said the pandemic's been good for that. But while you're coaching, how do you make a balance of being there for your team and for your kids? You know what? Um, I think, you know, in, in, even when I got married, there, there was an understanding to the commitment. And I think the, the family understands the commitment. They know the commitment. Uh, but I think what happens is, and I share this with a lot of coaches, especially at the four-year level, they ask me, hey, how do you maintain that family and the kids and time? And you know what? When, when, when the time ends for me uh, as a basketball coach, it's over. It's time to go home and it's time to be with family. And a lot of times we still try to have that social life. You know, we still try to go play golf. We still uh, try to, you know, guys would go have, you know, I don't, but you go have a beer. You go, uh, when I come home, I need the remote and I need to uh, be on the couch. But we have this level of commitment and there's an understanding to be excellent. There's a level of commitment, but I think what's not understood is, well, wait a minute, you spent that time at work. And honestly, it's the time that we try to take for ourselves that if we're going to consume ourselves with this coaching lifestyle, and if we're going to consume ourselves with uh, being intent on spending a lot of time with that, then uh, that carves out the social life, the recreation, all that stuff is, is you kind of carve that out and that goes towards family. Uh, Absolutely. I, I have two kids. I have a, a three-year-old and a 10-month-old. And you realize real quick <laughs> which stuff needs to be cut out while you're working. And yeah, I, I, it does make a lot of time for sure. Yeah, it was very convicting. Uh, and this was, I was at the four-year level. I was coaching it. At, and this is, I was a recruiting coordinator. So the recruiting coordinator is on the road a lot more than just the coaches that are there, even at the university level, the division one level, because not only are, uh, cause a lot of times you'll get a couple of days where you'll have practices and then you just go home. Right. So it's like a normal nine to five. Um, but if you're a recruiting coordinator, you go to practice and then you take off and you go watch a high school game or during the week you're traveling and you're watching, you're recruiting all over the country. Uh, and then when you go to games, you think the only time you, you take off is when you travel as a four-year coach and you go to games. And then you come home. Well, if you're a recruiting coordinator, you travel ahead of the pack and you go watch some high school games. And then you have your game in the area. And then you'll go watch more high school games and you actually leave the pack a little bit and you get home later. So my, my daughter, she was six years old, Mariah, and I'll never forget this. And this kind of broke my heart. I, I had my backpack on and I had a bag and I was walking through the door of the house and, you know, the kids can hear me pulling up, right? You know, so they greet me at the door and my daughter, Mariah said, daddy, you're staying at our house tonight. And I was just like, oh, she was like six years old and said, you're staying at our house. I mean, I've been gone so long that she didn't think I lived there, you know. 
so that cut deep and I thought if I had an opportunity I would I would find something where I wouldn't travel as much and which is what I'm doing here at the community college but it's still consuming though Oh, yeah, for sure. And the older they get, I'm sure the harder that kind of becomes as well. Um, thinking about that, what do your kids think about you af- after the show? Like, you're, I, I talk to the athletes on here and some MMA fighters and things like that. And it's always so funny to me to like be like, that's just dad. Like, what are you talking about? Like, how do they view you after this show is kind of blown up? They see you on TV, on Netflix. Like, what's their viewpoint of you right now? Yeah, they're like, Looking at me like, like, dude, you're not. My daughter is the funniest. Mariah is the one. She she laughs at me responding to like social media and stuff because I was like, I am never getting on social media. I don't need it. I could care less. She like laughs and is like, yeah, you got fifty five thousand Instagram followers. You got thousands of uh, Twitter followers. I told them I'm not getting on anything else. But they made me get that stuff. They were like, yeah, you got to sign up. And then some people said, yeah, it'd be great to, to get on that stuff. And I was a big, no, you guys hop off of that social media, get off that thing right now. Uh, and now I'm sitting here, I'm on it more than them because I'm trying to respond to DMs and different things like that. But they're like, it's just like normal. Like they expect me, like they're, they like still bug me. Like I'm like, no, I'm doing this podcast for this show. And they're like, daddy, daddy. Um, I need you to, and I'm like, dude, don't you see I'm like doing extra stuff? Like I'm popular now. (laughs) Yeah, whatever. Like, Hey, I need you to take me to my daughter last night. I'm like trying to do something important. And she's like, I need you to take me to, uh, office Depot. I got to get some construction paper for my science project for this project I got to do. And so I'm like, she like just disrupts me. And then, you know, it's the same. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, it was, I think the, one of the awesome things is they were able to live through it as well because they were able to be a part of it. And uh, we took it as, Hey, this is something great. Uh, And you know, they, they will watch YouTube families and different things like that. And I say, you know what, see, I never wanted to be a part of that. I never wanted to be, but you know, I feel like God, he kind of opened this door where we can kind of have this space where we can display how we are as a family. And, and I said, it's only for a moment. You know, the stuff is just 15 minutes of, of fame and people seeing you. And, and so they were excited about it. We did it. And they're like, they're even like, well, yeah, it's no big deal. So what, you know? Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't see it as a, it's, I just got the platform. It only lasts 15 minutes, as they say, you know. So I'll take the 15 minutes. I'm, my time's almost up. You know, I got about five more minutes to go and, <laughs> and no one will remember me, right? Yeah, well, you're doing a great job. And like you said, I love that. Hey, Daddy, let's go get some construction paper. Like, yeah, does- last night, like, hey, I need to go get some black construction paper. She's making like a solar uh, cooker or something. I need, And I'm like, you know, I'm trying to tell her, I, hey, I did it when I was young. I made a solar cooker. I was one of the first person to ever do it for my science project. And she's like, no, you don't know what you're, you're talking about. I need construction paper. Let's go. And so I had to stop what I was doing to get construction paper, you know. It's amazing too. Like how old is how old's your daughter? So she's she's 13 and then I have 15 and then my son is 16. Got you. So, it's amazing like <laughs> how your kids already at that point think you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing like I'm in the car, my youngest is 12. I'm in the car and like really I've been driving since I was 15, right? I'm 47. So that's like 30 years I've been driving. And every time we get in a car to go somewhere where she needs to go, she's saying, daddy, do you know how to get there? What time? Like, do you know where you're going? Why are you turning here? And I look and I'm like, and I, she just turned 13. So I keep saying, you little 12 year old, I've been doing this. I'm 47 years old. Do you, you don't think I know where I'm going? You know, cause she's like, well, I can't be late. I know you can't be late. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like she's telling me she can't be late. Do I know where I'm going? Why am I turning this direction? You didn't go this way last time. And I'm sitting up here like, what are you doing? What are you, I, you're 12. I'm 47. I've been driving for 30 something years. Like relax. Yeah. The car is really funny. Cause I have a three-year-old who sits in the back in his car seat and he's like, daddy, go, go, go. It's green. Go. Like, I'm like, what are you joking? Are you, are you kidding right now? Like, like telling the? me to go. Like, were these little people trying to tell me 
and ask me questions as if I don't know what I'm doing. It's uh -huh. like, well, half of it I introduced you to. Like, we're playing sports, and then they question me about, do I know? Wait, hold on. I'm the one that got you into sports. I'm a coach, and you don't want to listen to me. No, 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 no. I got it. I got it. I'm good. You know. Well, well there's the next question, I guess, automatically is, do your kids follow in that footstep of basketball? I know you played, you played ball at a high level. You did all that. Do, are they all into basketball? Do they have other sports they're kind of getting into? Like, how is that working? So my son is basketball. My daughter, yeah, I kind of manipulated my son a little bit, you know. But <laughs> uh, my daughter is – middle daughter is basketball, Mariah. And my youngest is softball. So I'll tell you this, and I think, you know, you can take it or leave it. I did not force them early. We stayed active. They did everything from karate to every sport, soccer to, you know, taekwondo to, you know, ballet, dance. Uh, we threw them in everything. And uh, we kept them active. You know, we were active in our church and just some of everything. And then I think once we gravitated and I, you know, I kind of leaned them a little, my son a little bit more towards basketball and, he took to it, but you know, there's some hardcore dads out there and I didn't really get a hardcore until the last couple of years when he decided he wanted to be good. So, you know, in my recommendation, man, so you don't want to risk burning out. Now there's a chance where you can take your kids, you can start them early and they can be great. Right. But I've also heard those stories where you start them out, you get them involved in sports and you kind of force them and they burn out. And the scariest thing for me was, I don't want to have, uh, and not so much with, with our sons, but with our daughters, you can get them going. They can be the greatest thing, and they loving this daddy time, right? And so you're not even knowing that they're really playing and they're, they're excelling because they like the daddy time. But then when high school comes, when another little uh, punk looks at is looking at your daughter and uh, – gets you know she gets attention from him she no longer needs daddy's attention uh, so you know what hey dad i'm done with softball i was just doing that because it, i was enjoying me and your time but hey i got somebody else to so those are the stories that i've heard uh i think my 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 daughters are uh doing well and they have the desire to play for themselves and they they enjoy it and so i think we're okay i didn't start them off early i wasn't super dad where we were at you know, at birth, I was handing them balls in their hands. Uh, we, they're all late bloomers in what they're doing because we started late and because they develop their own passion, they do their own workouts, even at a young age. So, uh, so my daughter, youngest is softball and they're all excelling. They have, uh, I tell my wife, they got the genes from me. They got some good genes. They got the athletic genes from me and the brains from her. They're all good <laughs> students as well. Um, so, you know, I'm fortunate because I get to watch. It keeps them active. Uh, it gives us more, more me time because I'm in sports, right? My wife is an educator. She's a teacher as well. So whenever they need help with assignments, you know, I jokingly say, oh, you don't need my help? And they look at me and, uh, no, that's okay, dad. We're going to go to mom, you know? And so they ask her for help. I really don't want them to come to me because I, 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 I can't figure out all the math stuff and anymore. Anyway, my son's doing like, you know, he's past algebra two. He's doing something else. I, I'm like, I can't do it. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm grateful. That gives us more time together too. Gives me and my son more time together. It gives us time to go watch them and celebrate them in something. Um, and, and I know it so that I can help them excel as well. I know athletics, I know high performing sports. And so what it's going to take. You know, I took my daughter out yesterday and made her run and made her do some, some took some ground balls. And, and then with my son, we'll go, or my daughter, I'll take him out and we'll do some extra hours with shooting. So I know how to help him excel without going over the top. Uh, and we'll see how it turns out. I told him my new hashtag is hashtag I'm not paying for college. So I love it. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's big time for sure. I'm glad you touched on that because that's, that's always a question I ask uh, athletes and coaches and things is how hard to push. And I'm glad you like, you nailed that right on the head. Uh, I think a lot of parents like to live through their kids 
And I know you've seen it uh, with your kids' games and things like that. Do you still see that at your college level? Like the parents, like how hard is that to deal with? Yeah, well, the, the problem with that, it, it doesn't come with the kid having performance issues. It has with the parents trying to come and get involved and influence the, the player on how he should be or what his role should be. When we clearly define a role that's going to allow these young men or young women to be successful. So we define it. We say, look, if you do these things, you're going to be successful. And what happens sometimes is the parents will come and manipulate that conversation and tell them what their role should be to be successful. Well, if you trust, especially in college, you have to trust that we have the credibility. I've been able to get, you know, student athletes to the next level, transfer, graduate. So you have to trust me that whatever role that I slot them in, that it's going to have, they're going to have success and we're going to help them get a four year uh, a four year scholarship. And we've done that. And so when you bring them here, you got to trust that. And because some parents they live through, they still try to influence the outcome. And it's like, you can't influence the outcome. If you try to influence the outcome, you're going to hurt um, the, the, the opportunities that, that they have in front of them. For so sure. That's what's happening. They're, they're trying to force the outcome. Be, like you said, they're trying to live through it. And then I have those parents, man, they sit back and I'm like, man, that is a parent who is allowing me to coach, allowing us to coach. And I know there are some that we see as good coaches, bad coaches or whatever, but, and if that's the case, then you need to find a place where you feel comfortable with the coach and you need to let the coach do his thing. Uh, but if you go in a situation where you feel like you don't respect the coach, you don't respect, and you're trying to coach and the coach is trying to coach, it's a disastrous situation. Yeah. And I know, um, you're a super like spiritual guy and I see, I watch it on the show. You don't swear and curse at your practices. Like you're very, you're a good role model in those ways. How, how has being a father kind of like molded you as the coach you are? Has that been an, like an impact at all? Oh yeah. Because here's the thing, man. I mean, ultimately it's not what you say is what you do. So I want, you know, first, first off it's my faith in terms of living out my faith and trying to do the right things. And, uh, but ultimately my children, I want to make sure. And even with, spending time with other players. I, I don't want to be, I've heard the stories where you got this coach, he's spending time and he's mentoring all these young men, but then his son is out running the streets. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be, it's kind of like they say the PK kid, you know, the pastor, he's there and he's got this great congregation and he's praying for all these people and he's going to all these different places and speaking, but then his kids are a mess because you're not taking care of it at home. So I wanted to make sure I'm an example. That's the most important thing to me uh, first is to be an example and to be an example of how to work. I want them to see that there are times where I'm shutting it down and, and I'm working. My head is down in the sand and I'm working. I don't want any distractions. I don't want any, uh, I'm serious. I'm, author I'm ready to go, boom, 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 boom. But then I want them to also see that I can shut it down. They see the phone. And it's ringing. They say, Daddy, there so-and-so is calling you. And I'm like, yeah, I, that's all right. I'll take that phone call later. And then it's family time. And want them to see the difference that I can lock in and I do have to separate uh, family. And then there's times where I can bring the family and show them, like, no, I want to show you uh, what a good family looks like. And so I bring my family around the players. And then I want my family to see what my work environment is like. Uh, and also see how they can encourage the players and develop relationships with other people and, and intertwine that, that as well. But ultimately, I, I have to set the example for my son, my daughters, and so they can see how, what it looks like to be successful and to be able to dive right into work, you know, head first, but then to be able to pull our head out of the sand, brush off, and be removed from it, and then spend that, that family time. So, I don't hide. I don't try to juggle it and be like, hey, how you doing? And juggle work and juggle. No, 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 no. It's either straight this or it's straight that. And you got to carve those times out. And that's, that's what I've been trying to do. Absolutely. What is there, is, if there's one Coach Mosley family tradition or when you guys, when you disconnect, you put the phone down, what's something you guys do together? Like besides the sports and all that stuff, is it movie time? Is it like, what, what you guys doing? 
Uh, let me tell you something. It is as simple as this. Uh, and that's the best time. So what's crazy about the document, the docuseries, my wife was so upset because we moved and we're like renting, right? This little small, little, uh, this small little house. It's like a three bedroom, the house that they showed. We got this nice big five bedroom, all of these rooms, you know, and she's like, no, they can't come to this house. This house sucks. This is a nice, this is a small house and they, we can film. And I was like, no, we're not moving back there so they can film. We'll stay here. We'll be renting here. And, you know, and then our, and I was like, we're not doing that. What that, that house created, because our other house, I had an office. Everybody had their bedroom. Uh, I had a den, living, I had a game room, I had all this, right? Just all this all over the place. We were never in the same room together. So over the last four or five years, we're in this house, we're renting. When we moved for school reasons, it got me closer to my job, my wife was closer. Uh, but what, it, what happens is now every night, it's like there's never a night where we're not sitting exactly like you saw. We're just all on the couch and all around each other, whether it's somebody on the laptop, whether it's whatever, we're just there. And then there's always at least 30 minutes where we are talking about the day. We're talking about a moment. Like my son will bring something up and say, hey, dad, guess what happened? This happened da, 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 at school and now everybody's listening. And now the whole conversation is about that moment. And we're all laughing. We're either laughing or criticizing the moment or whatever. Uh, if my wife brings something up, whatever it is. So it's all, it happens always uh, in that space. Yeah, I can talk about, you know, family vacations and all that, but I think that's what I've enjoyed over the last, uh, and they show that. And I think uh, they, they, I was looking on one of the producers or one of the editors, their uh, pages, and under their page, they were showing outtakes of when we were in there in the house. They were showing the outtakes. And one of the outtakes, and you saw my daughter, she had her hand on my head while I was trying to watch the video of a game. I'm trying to scout, right? She's got her hand on my head going like this. I'm a bald head. And I didn't think nothing of it because I literally, that usually happened. That's her form of affection. She just got to touch daddy. Let me just touch his bald head, you know? So I'm literally doing that. And they showed the outtake of her really messing with my head. When, during the show, they just showed it a little bit. But she was really messing with my head and rubbing it. And I was thinking, like, man, that's, that's us right there. You know, and then my wife will throw something out there, and we're just talking. So th that's the moment. It's not necessarily watching a movie, but it's just like we'll sit there and we'll talk, and we're just kind of like all like-minded, and we'll just all joke about something, you know? Sure. It's just the being together and being yeah. present. Yeah, I think I, with my, my two boys, like I said, and – Sometimes I get a look from my three-year-old where it's just me and him. I know it's like the exact, like you said, with the bald head, like her rubbing it. That's your thing. Like yeah. those are the moments that you remember forever, for yeah. sure, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Um, if there's anything you can leave dads with, a tip, a, a word to the wise to end this, um, shoot me. What do you got? You know what? I, I think it's uh, remember that they're, they're watching us and – I'll tell you what, man, I don't care what we think we're hiding, what we, they are watching and they see all and they, they know all and they're a lot smarter than we think. So they're watching us and uh, I need to make sure that I put on a good example of even how to be a husband and how they're watching how I talk to my wife and how we communicate. I mean, sometimes we'll sit there and we'll communicate. My kids, they'll literally, and now they're becoming teenagers. They're literally, their face is literally turned this way. And me and my wife, will, we can joke, we can disagree, but their eyes are kind of looking like this. They, they're, they're soaking in the reaction. And I have to remember as, uh, that, that they're watching everything. And I think that's one of the most important things is, to, is that they can see the interaction between uh, you know, husband and wife and see the leadership in the family and how the leadership comes together whether it's agreement or disagreement and how we can work it out and how we take light of things. Um, and what's crazy is me and my wife disagreements in, ends up turning into laughs and, you know, or it's just, it's just sarcasm that never escalates, you know? Uh, and then even in our affectionate moments, they, they see the affection, 
you you don't want to get, uh, in my opinion, we don't ever get overly affection, but we let them know that there is affection and that this is what, uh, you know, I believe to save the families, this is what a, a married couple should look like. In our opinion, this is what a married couple should look like. And, uh, and our kids see that. And I, I think it's important that, you know, our kids need to see good leadership in the homes, good leadership going out uh, at, with, our, with our jobs, coming home, doing the right thing, you know, good leadership. And so my son sees like, hey, my wife is working too. And I'm working, right? And it would be great if my wife can do everything. She can cook, clean, do all this do you know plant flowers all change diapers just do all that it'd be great if she could but you know what she can't work and do all that so uh my my kids see me like they know since they've been born that i do laundry you know i do the laundry i'm the laundry guy they they come to me daddy what where's my this where's my dad can you wash this for me my wife doesn't wash anything i do most of the cleaning around the house you know i tell my wife there's two things i can't do i'm not i cannot cook i don't know how to cook you're the cook so you know what? That takes pressure off her as she cooks. She cooks more because she doesn't have to do everything. And then I say, I'm not washing a toilet. You know, I can't wash it. My mom traumatized me because <laughs> when I dripped on the toilet, my mom pushed my head in the toilet. She oh. said, look at that. Clean that toilet. Lift up the seat, son. And, and so from there, I've been traumatized. So th those are the two things. But I mean, heck, I mopped two days ago and my son's looking at me. So now he doesn't have this mindset where who's supposed to do it or what. It's like, no, there's a shared responsibility in this leadership. Um, yeah, you can say I'm the strongest and I can open the can of, you know, of mayonnaise or I can open jars or whatever and I can, I'll go change the tire, but there's a shared leadership and I think it's good for our, our kids to see. And they're watching everything. They're watching what I watch. So if I, whatever I watch on television, at some point they're going to feel like it's okay to watch that, you know? Uh, and engage in that. And, and I, I try to guide them by the way I live, how they should be guided through uh, an introduction to a television show or introduction to certain things, or it's time to go to bed. If I'm up and if I catch myself on social media or on my cell phone, boom, let's put our, I got to put it down. I got to make sure I spend time reading the Bible or whatever it is that how we want to make an impression, we have to do it. We can't assume that our, our kids are going to do it on their own because we tell them. So they're watching us. And I think that's important. They're watching every single thing. And my son, it's not just the DNA, but I think some of the things that I've done in the past, he does. Our kids are just like me and my wife in terms of how we greet people, in terms of our presence when we enter a room. My wife is so bubbly and happy. And then myself, we're social. And our kids, yes, it's in the DNA, but our kids are the same way. Everyone likes our kids. Everyone likes my wife. They don't, some people don't like me as much, but <laughs> everyone loves my wife. And she smiles everywhere she goes. And then my daughters are the same way. And then with me, I can be quiet. I can be reserved. Or I can be energetic. And my son is kind of, you know, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Sure. I think those are, I appreciate you saying that. I think you're right. Uh, they do watch everything, even at the, the young age I have. And we are their ultimate role models, right? I mean, there could be actors, athletes, this and that, musicians, but they see us every day. So they learn our traits. They learn what we do. They look how we react to things. That's just going to get ingrained with them. So I, I appreciate those. I think you're 1 billion percent right. Yeah. No, no, it's absolutely, it's great. Even down to, uh, my kids are now they're my son is he's performing at a high level where he'll probably be recruited. He's a 10th grader. He's starting on varsity in a great program. One of the top leagues here in California. And I think he saw or sees they watching how I handle pressure. They watch how I handle success as well. So how I handle success is no big deal. Coach of the year, all these different things, championship games, they watch how I handle success. So now when they go perform and they're playing, it's no big deal if my daughter hits a home run. She's just like, it's not a big deal. I got to get better. And, you know, I, I have to be a better – I can't become arrogant or lifted up because my son handles the same way. They ask, man, how's your son so poised uh, on the basketball court? He's small 
and he's poised and he's starting varsity on a high level team at in the 10th grade as a sophomore. Uh, and I think they see that for me inside. I might not be poised, sure. but I know my, my kids are watching. And so they're watching like, man, he's dad's, this is how we supposed to be, you know? And so I, they're going to, they're going to watch. And I, I think that's the, the biggest thing. They're going to see everything we do. Yeah. We can talk about college fun. We can talk about what sport or when to do, but, but how they're going to watch, uh, watch you to, to see. Yeah. Well, I coach, I appreciate you popping on with me and maybe it's a bit of a different interview. I'm sure you're doing interviews all the time. Um, but I love hearing you as coach dad, dad over there. Absolutely. It always comes down to dad, dad's full-time job. So full-time job. Yep, I appreciate absolutely. you. Uh, your show's great. Everyone. If you haven't seen last chance you on Netflix, it's the newest season. It's a really fun show. Great uh, players and athletes that play there. Um, and a great coach. So, and your staff. I love your staff, the whole, the whole yeah. crew. So great. thank you so much for joining me today. Baby dude out. Thanks coach. Thank you.